It was a passport to uh, visit places and stay in areas which I would not have been able to visit at that time. Every day was an adventure. I've always liked out-of-the-way places. I think the further I could get away from civilization, the better. Well, when you were planning your trips, very much depended on where the hostels were located. It introduced me to quite a number of parts of the country that um, I wouldn't really have visited otherwise. In my time, it was a means by which you could escape from the urban environment particularly and enjoy something that was totally different and in a much healthier and pleasanter atmosphere. I just think it's wonderful here and all my friends are here too so they're not missing out on anything. There's massive fields and waves and rocks and I found a really pretty one. It's just wonderful here, it's a wonderful experience. Well, the first hostel I ever stayed at was the Old Mill at Winchester. And that surprisingly was on um, VJ Day in 1945. I think the first thing I remember the warden saying was basically, I recognise it's VJ Day today and everybody's celebrating, but if you're not back in this hostel by half past ten, you will not get readmitted and there'll be no bed for you. We were a bit surprised and... Um, in the event, we were back before half past ten, but couldn't sleep at all because of the noise that was going on outside the hostel. It was incredible. It's quite cool because you've got all these trees, you've got seats and you've got loads of games to play. Compared to where I come from, it's like really quiet and um, peaceful and nice. I think it was nine pence a night. My very first youth hostel was at Minehead. We just left school in 1949, cycled down to Cornwall. It was a big old house, and I still, I think it is still the same youth hostel. It's proper fun, and like you just get drenched. It's freezing cold though. It is so cold, but it's really good. It's really fun and to play in and that. It's much busier back where we live, and it's really. It's nice up here, it's just calm and really good. Well, for young people of limited means, it probably was the only way of getting around just after the war. I don't think if it hadn't been for the wide trade that I would never have got um, so interested in seeing Britain. Young people today have a very different agenda to the one that uh, I had. But I'm sure that there are plenty of youngsters who today would respond to the kind of opportunities that uh, YHA offers. Hello, I'm John. This is Simon. We're your instructors for the day. Right, if everybody could just jump off their bikes quickly. It was really good, right, because I had never ridden a bike before. It was a forest, really, like loads of trees, stinging nettles, low. Good environment, really good. Quite muddy sometimes, low. I went down a big hill and it was really fun. And like everyone got really tired because you had to go up this humongous hill and it was like covered in puddles and all that and you kept on getting sprays. I was all nice and clean and I'm just drenched in mud. I think a young person today would get, hopefully, the same amount of satisfaction that I got out of using the youth hostels all those years ago. It gives you a sense of achievement in so far as being to travel where you want to travel to, it provides an experience of meeting with other people. So all in all, generally speaking, I would think it's an organisation which still appeals to quite a lot of young people. There's quite a bit in the press at the moment about uh, the problems of youngsters not having challenges and being prohibited from tackling things like climbing trees and walking on their own in the countryside. I can understand the fears of parents, being a parent myself, but I think that youngsters do need to face up to these challenges on their own or in company with their mates and uh, I think it's very good for them to 
look after themselves. You can't keep them in cotton wool all their lives.